Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I am going to analyze Mr. Ray Dalio's portfolio for you. He has made some very specific, very important changes in his portfolio that can act as a massive learning for us in case we are invested in the stock market. Picking up cues from him, we can accordingly realign and readjust our portfolio. Now, Mr. Ray Dalio is one of my favorite, absolute favorite investor in the world. The reason is that he is one of the foremost macroeconomics based investor. Now, people often discount the value of macroeconomic investing. And let me explain this via an example that why is it that macroeconomic investing is one of the most useful forms of stock investing. Now, what happens is that, for example, let's assume that we are sitting in August right now and we are taking a look at Indian tech stocks. Right? We are analyzing candle patterns, we are analyzing charts, we are analyzing cup and handles, we are analyzing this, that, bunch of different things. That is technical analysis, nothing wrong with it and nothing against technical traders who do intraday or short term trading, nothing wrong with it. I also do swing trading. But here is the reality that if for some reason, if sector rotation happens in US tech stocks, trust me, Indian tech stocks will fall short. You can look at whatever RSI you want to look at, it will not work out. Similarly, the moment the bond market yields start increasing or start going up, there will be massive outflow of money in the stock market and all the stocks, be it mid cap, small cap, large cap, they will start going down. That is the power of macroeconomics and Mr. Ray Dalio looks at major trends and he makes his investments. So it is extremely important for us to be educated about how to understand macroeconomics and more importantly, how to apply that knowledge in the stock market. This is very difficult to teach. I make my honest effort. So please give it a thumbs up. It will make me super, super, super happy and I would really appreciate it. So with that said, on today's video, I am essentially going to do three things. One is that I am going to take you through Mr. Ray Dalio's core portfolio, what he holds right now. What are some of the major changes that he has made? Number two, I am going to cover where is he investing now and more importantly, why is he doing that? So that is two. And third is that I am going to cover major implications of this and how as retail investors we can pick up certain cues and avoid certain overvalued sectors and which type of sectors we should jump into. So without further ado, let me kickstart the first section where we will just quickly go through Mr. Ray Dalio's portfolios. Now if you take a look at top 50 Bridgewater Associates holding, these are the major holdings that you can see and you will see some major changes. Number one change right at the upfront, you will see that 37% change has happened at S&P 500. So S&P 500 is an index fund based out of US and this invests in US stocks and he has cut down his index holding by 37% right which is massive right this has a value of approximately 845 as of now so he would have sold shares worth 600 billion dollars a lot of money so we need to understand why this change is happening very very important concept for us then again, if you take a look at that, he has bought a lot of Walmart, 45% increase in his holding. He has bought PNG, around 47% holding has gone up. He has bought Coca-Cola, again 45% increase. Pepsi, again 49% increase. Costco, McDonald's, right, again 50% increase, almost 50% increase. So you're seeing that he has cut down his major holding on S&P 500 which is an index fund. He is not looking to invest in the entire index as of now. And number two, he has invested in very specific types of stocks, for example, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and he is taking very big bets, very, very, very big bets. He has not just cut down his portfolio by 1%, 2%, 5%. He has cut down his S&P holdings by almost 40%. He has increased his holdings in certain types of stocks by up to 50% also, which is massive. So very important for us to understand these two key changes. So let me go step by step. Now let's first take a look at the chart for S&P 500 by weighted average. So the chart must be here. So just zoom it out and take a look at it and you will make some key observations. So you will see that if you take a look at S&P 500, the S&P 500 has become more and more concentrated with time. So back in 2000, companies like Microsoft, GE, Cisco, Intel and Walmart were the top five companies which formed S&P 500 by weight, right? And their total weight was approximately 18%, approximately 18%. Now we are sitting in 2021, the top five companies that are making the S&P 500 are all five tech stocks, right? So these are five tech stocks and they make up 23% market cap. Now, if Mr. Ray Dalio is bringing down his S&P 500 holding in entirety, what does this indicate? So he believes in the following narrative. He simply means that, hey, right now, S&P 500 is overvalued, right? He, it is overvalued. 
Why does he think that it is overvalued? He thinks it is overvalued simply because of the fact that the top five companies making up the majority of S&P 500 index, index is basically a collection of stocks. The top five stocks are making 23% of this basket, right? So which is huge, which is insane, absolutely insane. So he is not betting big on this part of the S&P 500. So he has brought down this holding by 40% because he feels that the tech stocks are slightly overvalued. Whatever money he is making, he is trying to pour that in other type of stocks. That's A. Even if you take a look at this graphical representation, I have told this multiple times that in majority of the cases, whenever there is a very, very sharp increase like this, you must be very wary, right? You must be absolutely wary and you must look at these individual stocks. Are these good companies? Absolutely. These are great companies. But the problem is that are they overvalued right now? In my opinion, yes. And whenever there is a correction that will happen in the US tech stocks, Indian tech stocks will also suffer the same fate. Please remember this. It is very important for you to note that down. So which brings us to the second key point in Mr. Ray Dalio's strategy, how he has changed it. So if you take a look at where is he investing the money? So he's investing in Walmart, he's investing in PNG, he's investing in Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Costco, McDonald's, companies like these. These are stable companies with very strong brand value. Okay, so this is a very, very important point. If you have watched my inflation video, you will understand why Mr. Ray Dalio is betting big on brands right now. Brands that are consumed by everyday Americans, right? That is the simple philosophy here. So here is a very interesting thing that I will show you. Now, if you take a look at a recent news article by Business Insider, you will see that companies like Taco Bell, McDonald's, Dunkin are raising prices for their menus. And if you scroll through this article, this is a very important paragraph that you need to take a look at. So according to Gordon Haskett analysis, the greatest price increase have been 10% at Taco Bell, 8% at McDonald's, 8% at Dunkin. Now here, there are a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself. Number one, why is it that companies like McDonald's are able to increase their price of their menu so easily by 8%? Inflation in the US is approximately 1-2%. to But McDonald is able to increase its price by 8%, right? Why? Because McDonald has built a brand. Brands are very, very powerful. Yesterday, I released a video where I mentioned categorically that, hey, why am I investing in something like Voltas, Whirlpool, etc.? Because these are brands. Why am I not investing in something like Umber Enterprise? Because it's a back-end company. It's not a brand brand. So in a high inflationary environment, and this is a key takeaway for you, that in a high inflationary environment, we are currently in a very high inflationary environment. In a high inflationary environment, good brands can keep on increasing their prices. McDonald has done it for decades now. That every decade, inflation goes up. McDonald increases its prices also and it stays in business. It has been doing that successfully and that is what makes McDonald's one of the biggest biggest fast food chain companies in the world. So just to quickly summarize, number one, according to Mr. Ray Dalio, the tech stocks are slightly overvalued right now. He is cutting down his holdings of S&P 500 because of that reason. Otherwise, people do not sell index. He has sold his index. He has sold 40% of his index. He has moved that money into what type of firms? That has very high, strong brand value. Why? Because we are currently sitting in a very high inflationary environment. He envisages that this high inflation environment is going to continue going ahead in the future. And if he is holding good brands, they will control the power of pricing. They will continue to increase the price. And Mr. Ray Dalio is going to make money in the process. That is the reason why he has increased his holding in everyday American companies like Pepsi, Costco, McDonald's, etc. Now, this brings us to the second section that where is it that Mr. Ray Dalio is now investing more of his money? And what are some of the key points that I observe? So first thing that you will notice is that he has started taking more positions in Vanguard, FTSE, emerging markets. Emerging markets would be markets like India. He has started investing more money in Alibaba Group Holding Limited. He is making China-based investments also. And he is making a lot of international investments. So let me just quickly take you through that. If you take a look at ICS China Large Cap, if you take a look at MSCI China, he is investing a lot of money outside the US now. So it's important for us to understand that as investors, now we are retail investors, we do not have that big a portfolio like Mr. Ray Dalio, but important lesson for us is that if we get an opportunity to invest outside our home country, we should diversify because these days there is a lot of sovereign risk that if you are investing money only in China or only in India and if something bad happens in India or China, we are not diversified. Therefore, if you are investing money in stock markets, you must identify a way to diversify outside India also 
I agree that India is very much growing. I am heavily invested in India and will continue to be heavily invested in India. But at the same time, like Mr. Ray Dalio, follow the diversification principle from a country point of view as well. Now, there are a couple of countries that I will take you through. Why am I bullish about these countries and why Mr. Ray Dalio is also very bullish about these countries. First is India. Press the like button. I've been talking about India that you know what India has like amazing growth opportunities, especially in the stock markets. So Mr. Ray Dalio is also taking similar positions. So it's important for us to understand that why are investors so bullish on India right now, despite its GDP contracting massively due to coronavirus. So here is a chart for you that shows the forecast of by what percentage the middle class of India will grow. So you can see that by 2040, India's middle class will take over China's middle class, Indonesia's middle class, Vietnamese middle class, everyone. In pure number terms, it would be massive. India's middle class would be massive. And if India's middle class is massive, a lot of good things start to happen because people undertake more discretionary expenditure. And majority of the companies end up making money if people are undertaking discretionary expenditures. Many a time people ask me that, hey Akshat, can you explain why so much investor money is flowing in India? Here is the reason why. That the India's middle class is growing. It will continue to grow. It's only a matter of time that India's middle class will be massively big. They will start undertaking discretionary expenses. And no matter what industry you are looking at, there will be massive growth opportunities in those industries. Now, here was a very interesting article on Financial Times regarding this, that nearly 55% of India's population is expected to join the ranks of the middle class. In fact, because of India's demographies are much younger compared to China and the US, India's middle class could be the largest in the world by 2025 itself, right? So here they are saying that by 2025 itself, India's middle class could be the biggest, right? These are all different forecasts, but all of us can agree that, hey, India's middle class is growing, booming. Discretionary spending will grow in India and that puts India on a very strong growth trajectory that we might witness a massive bull run in the Indian market in the next couple of decades itself. Now, if you do the same analysis for China, then you will see that Mr. Ray Dalio is undertaking a lot of positions in China. He is doing this for two reasons. Now, here is a chart for you. You can see that it has been published by International Monetary Fund. It clearly predicts that by 2030, the Chinese economy will overtake US's economy. So it makes sense to invest in Chinese company. If you want, please comment. I'll make a separate video on Chinese stock market or the US stock market. If you want me to do more analysis, do let me know in the comment box. But the bottom line here is that investors, especially with the magnitude of Mr. Ray Dalio's portfolio, they need to take exposure in markets that are the most booming and will become the biggest in the world in the very near future. China is likely to do that very, very soon. So he is taking exposure there that say we, the Chinese stock market has come down, right? Because of Chinese government intervention, especially in tech stocks, so it has come down. Mr. Ray Dalio has made these changes very, very recently. So he is taking advantage of buying these undervalued assets as of now in the Chinese market. Now you would say that, hey, Akshat, okay, great. You know what, man, you are talking about Ray Dalio. He has like billions and billions of dollars. He is investing in China, US. What do I have to do with this? Why do I bother if I am an Indian investor? So this section is for you. And here are a couple of things that you must understand. First key thing that you must notice with Mr. Ray Dalio's changing strategy is that A, he believes that tech stocks are overvalued. So if you have invested heavily in tech and Indian stocks, please do a more thorough analysis. I'm not saying that it is bad or good. I'm not saying any of those things, but do your own due diligence as of now. That's one. Second thing is that we are sitting in a very high inflationary environment. What indicates that? That Mr. Ray Dalio has taken out his money from S&P 500, has put that in massive everyday brands. Why? Because these brands will grow. These brands will grow in a high inflationary environment. We are sitting in a high inflationary environment. So if as a retail investor currently you have your money in your FD, you are committing a sin, right? Please take out your money out of an FD and invest in any brand. Okay. It will grow. Third, in India, bull run is going to happen, right? It will happen. It might not happen in the next five years, but it might happen in next 15, 20 years, but it will happen, right? When it happens, your money will increase a lot. Only if you have invested in businesses, right? And how do you invest in business? Via stock markets. Therefore, you should learn about stock market, invest with the right brands, invest in mid cap, small cap stocks also, invest in companies that will benefit from the growth of the middle class in India. If you are making the right bets, your money can literally 
grow a lot. We often talk about multi-baggers and hey Akshar, tell me like some multi-baggers. There is no such thing as multi-baggers. Essentially, you invest your money at the right time in the right set of companies and they grow up to become multi-baggers. And I believe that this is the time for India that if the Indian middle class grows with some push coming from international markets, there is a very high likelihood that if you're investing and picking the right bets as of now, then if you learn and invest your money in the stock market, your money might actually become 4x, 5x, 6x also in a very quick span of time. Now, what are the risks that you must be worried about if you are an investor in India? Now, in India, what happens is that India's debt to GDP ratio is very high. It is one of the highest in the world. Here is an article for you to read. Now, with countries like India or emerging economies, if our governments default in terms of paying their debt, so we have taken debt, the entire world has taken debt. But when US is taking on debt, the world is okay with it. Why? Because they know that US is a very strong economy or China is a very strong economy. They are okay with it. But if Indian government or emerging market governments start taking more and more and more debt, they are worried that, hey, whether these countries can repay their debts. So it becomes a slight issue if our debt becomes unmanageable for a wide variety of reasons. For example, if the government is not good, if they are not showing fiscal prudence, they are printing more and more currency, wide range of bad things can be done, right? So if such a scenario plays out, of course, Indian stock market is going to suffer. You and I, as small retail investors, we can't do anything at that stage. So keep a track of how Indian government is controlling its debt. So very important for you to understand that, that the debt needs to be in control. If the debt is out of control and it's going haywire, then please get out of the stock market at that stage. Final point is that, hey Akshat, can you tell us some of the sectors in which you are bullish for, let's say, one or two decades? I am very bullish on Indian banking stocks. I'm very bullish on India's consumer durable good industry stocks. I'm very bullish on India's EV sector stocks. These are two, three major bets I'm making. Of course, there are multiple good stocks outside of these industries as well. So please do your due diligence and make your calls, but do invest, learn about investing. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and a comment and I will see you the next time.